Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. Arbor Scientific is a, um, they're showing how this Crooks radiometer works and do, did a fabulous job. Now, let me just play it and then I will explain to you what's going on. And I might cut in as I'm going along here. Here goes. Now, before we get into this, scientists don't know how this radiometer works. <laughs> Nobody does at the moment. I do. I understand it, but they don't. Most people are familiar with the light mill radiometer. You shine light on it and it spins. The tiny air pressure inside changes to a bit higher on the dark side, which pushes it into motion. All right, now he says it pushes it into motion. Let's talk about that in a minute. This happens because the black side heats up faster than the white side. Okay, you see what's going on? He's taking an infrared sensor and he's seeing this is this is emitting light because it's getting heated up. These are not. These are not emitting any or absorbing anything. So it, it started to absorb. Now it's emitting. All right, so think about that. Now let's go further here. The radiometer is mostly evacuated, which I will prove here by cracking this one open underwater. All right, now what's going to happen is it's, there was hardly any molecules whatsoever in there. In a regular air, there's a bazillion of them. So he's only got this much air in there. It is not a full vacuum, however. See, there's only that much air that was in this whole thing. But what most people don't emphasize is that the radiometer is driven not by light, but by heat. And you can illustrate this by pouring some hot water on top. You can even do that by putting your hand on that. It's just the heat of your hand will make that go. He's putting hot water on. Look, he did no light, no, no light driving. Very quickly. Now, watch this. Cold water. All right. It, Wait. <laughs> now it's turning around and going back the other direction. Why would cold make it go backwards? and heat make it go that way. Thank you, my good friend. Okay, the problem is that the physicists have no clue about light. That's, I'm, I'm just being perfectly honest with you. This is pulsed red laser. That is light accelerating. Not supposed to happen. That is the particle that's in the center of the wave, and the wave is a magnetic wave because the particle is a dipole, which means it's a magnet. And here's the magnets right here. And there's two of them, one here and one there, side to side. All right? You can think of it any way you want. Black and white, it's a positive and negative. The black is gravity. It's the attraction of the white ones. It pulls them together. Not only did we accelerate them, we caused fission and fusion at the Venturi. And that's exactly what CERN and Fermilab would like to do and have not been able to do and we have done it right here. This black ball, remember I showed you the black and the white, the black and the white? Well now the black is missing from the white. The white is all by itself and the black is what's called a sterile muon neutrino and this is called electron showers. Now how can I say that? Well here's how I can say it because CERN says it and Fermilab says it. The muon neutrino, the black ball, and the white ball, the electron neutrino, when they concuss and cause their radiation, which is their radiation, the muon stays black, the electron turns into a shower. They never understood it because they don't understand even the atom. They don't understand the nucleus. They don't understand electrons. They don't understand anything, anything about energy. Light slows down, speeds up. There's all kinds of things. Okay, my friends, short and sweet. The current atomic model is the Bohr model, one gigantic proton and little tiny electrons that float around the outside of hydrogen. Now, this is my model of hydrogen, the dipole electron flood. There is no gigantic nucleus of positiveness. It is all dipoles. However, these dipoles move their polarity into the center causing the dark matter of the dipole to go to the center and the glowy white matter to go on the outside. Electrons are dipoles. Now, can I demonstrate that? Yes, I can. 
this would be what you would see. This is a cross section. This is what you would see if you were looking at the core of a hydrogen. And one more electron would want to get in because the, the glowy part would want to get into this black part. Look up tractor beam magnets. I'm going to put a link to it. And also I want you to look up salt experiments. I'll put a link to that as well. And that shows the salt experiment shows the atomic structure locking in at different sizes. And the tractor beam magnet shows this where the outside particle will come and bang, it can't get in. Because the, these glowy ones say, no, 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 you can't come in. He says, I want to get in to get to that, the, the, the glowy one. And it says, no, you cannot come past us. We have enough here now. And it says, you can stay that far away. That's what quantum means. It's a distance away. Now, the bigger this thing gets, it will attract more and more that want to get into that center. And they will stay at different quantum distances. That's the whole idea of quantum. Quantum. Now, what would we see if we really saw this? We would see this. And that's all of these would be electrons. An electron is made up of, two, of, of a dipole. Now, if we could cut it in half, what would we see? We would see that. That's all we would see is the dark matter in the center. And that's why these want to hook up with them. They want to be glued together. But the white ones don't want to be next to each other. They will go out to the outside. They'll get as far away as they can and push the black matter to the center. This is what I have found in the experiments. All right, so we know the Crookes re reacts to light because light is heat. It has heat to it. It reacts to heat of your hand. It reacts to heat from hot water around it. And it reacts backwards to cold. This is the key. Th that's the real one tricky one. Now, why does it spin? Why does that thing spin? The black spins away from light. So the light comes in, the black goes around. Now, why does heat spin? Why does heat do it? If it's not, light is not necessary. Heat does exactly the same thing as light. So is light heat? Well, we could think about it. Why does cold reverse spin? Is cold reverse light? Think about that. Why is the gas density critical inside that dome? Why does it have to be exactly a certain place in order for it to spin? Otherwise, if there's no gases, gases in there, it won't spin at all. If there's too much gases in there, it's regular, like uh, the atmosphere out here, it won't spin. So you have to have almost nothing, as you saw where it filled up with water when he opened it underwater. So what I'm going to do is let you think this over. I know why that thing spins, and I know why it spins backwards, and I know what cold is, and I know what heat is, and I know what these particles are, and I know what electrons and muons and electron neutrinos and photons are, and I know what protons are constructed of, and I want somebody to speak to me about it, because I am showing evidence. I'm not showing you just guesses. So think about what you think causes that thing to spin and why does it spin backwards when it's cold think it over next video i will explain it's very very simple and if i don't hear from fermi lab or lawrence livermore or cern or jpl or any of those people and i won't it's an admission of that they're they're just wrong that's just an admission they're wrong if they won't look at something like this and, and which could help us because we get free energy i've been showing this for six years now how to get free energy from this interaction by putting a solar collector in right after this is cold fusion this is cold fission and fusion and in between the harvest is 207 times they claim the energy value prior to its splitting if you can split them it appears to create 207 times as much energy, and it, it sure as hell looks like it. Because, it, you, I mean, you can see it with your own eyes. It's not hard to see that this is an enormous increase in energy from where back here. Energy is nothing more than glow. Anytime you see something glowing, you know that you're getting more and more energy. The more glowier it gets. All right, so now it's time for them to come to me. All right, if they do not, they have admitted incompetence basically because a, a scientist I don't care anybody can make a mistake no problem whatsoever 
everybody makes them until they figure it out. But once they look at something and they can't can't say no, this is wrong, they just hide from it. That's not a scientist. And this is what I have found a hundred percent now, hundred percent. Not a single one has shown any interest whatsoever in this, other than to tell me to go away by our top people that we're paying by the government. I don't think that's right at all.